Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr Barton, where every week I try my very best to pick you out a delightful maths question that has been kindly contributed to the Diagnostic Questions website by Edexcel, AQA and OCR to help you prepare as best you can for the challenges that lay ahead in this scary new GCSE. And indeed, the topic I'm gonna to show you today is brand new to GCSE. Well, brand new to, to some of you. Maybe some of you will have looked at it before. Um, and, well, I'm not gonna to say too much more about it because it'll give the game away, apart from the fact that loads of students are getting this wrong on the Diagnostic Questions website. So it's been contributed by Edexcel, um, and it goes like this. Consider the graph of y equals x plus three x minus five. What is the x value of the turning point P? What is the x value? Now, there's a couple of things here. Firstly, you might be thinking, what the flipping heck is the turning point? Well, the turning point, it's got a couple of different names. Some people like to call it the minimum point, or if the graph's the other way around, it might be the maximum point. Another word for it, if you go on to do A-level maths, is the stationary point. And that's probably my favorite term for it, the stationary point. But turning point's fine. It's just where the graph turns. Um, the gradient of the graph is negative that side, and it turns and changes to positive that side. But of course, the problem with this is, where are the flipping X my axes? They haven't given me any axes to work with here. And that is a bit of an issue. But as long as you know a few things about quadratic graphs, you're going to be fine. Now, first thing I'm going to say is there is a way of doing this that involves a technique called completing the square. Now that, if you're doing the higher level uh, maths exam, is a really important technique to learn. But if you're doing the foundation uh, level or you want another way of doing it, for the higher level, I'm gonna show you this technique. So I'm not gonna cover completing the square, but I promise I'll do that in a future video because it's one of my favorite things. So we're gonna find the turning point without completing the square, okay? So the first thing we've gotta know is, where does this graph cross the x-axis? What does this graph look like? Because we've no, x, no axes drawn there, but we know the equation of it. And we know the equation of it here. We've got y equals x plus three x minus 5. Now, where does that graph cross the x-axis? Well, at the x-axis, y is equal to 0. It's flat at the x-axis. So the way to find out where this graph crosses the x-axis is to solve this equation. x plus 3, x minus 5 equals 0. So either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. What value of x solves this equation? Well, I think minus three is gonna go down a treat there. What value of x solves this equation? x equals five is gonna work. Now, the point of doing that is we now know that when x equals minus three, y is equal to zero, and when x equals five, y is equal to zero. So that tells me that at minus three and five, this graph must cross the x-axis, and that is the key to doing this question. So I'm now gonna put my drawing skills and in fact technology skills to the limit. I mean, I've been doing all right recently, but it could all go horrendously wrong here as I attempt to draw. Okay, no, not, not the worst thing I've ever done again. And let's get one going like that. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, things are looking up a little bit. Right, so let me mark on what I know. I know that this graph is gonna cross the x-axis at five, and I know it's also gonna cross the x-axis at minus three. Do I know anything else about it? Well, I can probably work out some other stuff, but they're not too, too important for now. So I'm just gonna draw it. It's a quadratic graph. It's gonna go like that, like that, like that. And the question is, what's the coordinate of P there? Now, do you notice how I've already marked P on this side of the y-axis? How did I know to do that? Well, that's kind of the secret to this uh, this question, because all quadratic graphs share a very important property, and that is they are symmetrical. Now, they're not symmetrical about the y-axis, so they don't necessarily have their bottom bit on the y-axis. They're symmetrical about the points where they cross the x-axis, and their line of symmetry is slap bang in the middle. Now, mine's not the best drawing you've ever seen in your life, but imagine that's exactly halfway between those two points, and that's the key. This line of symmetry, where this turning point is, is halfway between your two x-axis crossing points. 
So it's halfway between minus three and five. How do we find the number that's halfway between two numbers? How do we find the midpoint? Well, I like to add them together and halve my answer. There's lots of other ways, but that's my favorite way. Minus three plus five, minus three add on five, I think is two divided by two, and that's gonna give me one. So I reckon that value there is x equals one. It's four away from that, a crossing point, and if you take four off one, it's four away from that crossing point. So I reckon x equals one is the x value of the turning point. But we're just scraping the surface there, because to really understand this topic, we've got to start thinking about the wrong answers. Where might x equals minus one come from? Well, I reckon you get minus one if you instead worked out the midpoint or the average of plus three and minus five, because that has got an average of minus one. But of course, that's not the crossing points. That is the factorized form. The crossing points are at minus three and positive five, hence why we get one. So I reckon students who've got minus one have just taken the average of plus three and minus five. Minus 15, minus 15 is an interesting one. It's not the right answer, but it is something on this graph. Any idea what? Minus 15? Well, look, think what happens if you expand these brackets. You're gonna get an x squared, you're gonna get a three x, you're gonna get a minus five x. What else are you gonna get? You're gonna get a three times minus five, which is minus 15. Minus 15 is the y-intercept. That value there is minus 15. So it's the y-intercept, which unfortunately isn't what we're after here. And finally, minus two. Now why the flipping heck might someone come up with minus two? Well, again, a couple of reasons. One reason possibly might be, if you expand these brackets, you end up with x squared, you get a minus five x, you get a plus three x, you get a minus 15. What happens when you simplify your x's? You get an x squared, oh sorry, <laughs> plus three x there. You get an x squared and you get a minus two x. So maybe people are thinking to themselves there, all right, minus two x, that's the number of x's, okay? So maybe they think that's the x value of the turning point, but that's got nothing to do with it. And you can get that as well by saying three take away five is gonna give you a minus two. But no, that's not the x value of the turning point. The turning point you get by doing symmetry. And finally, I always like to ask, what other wrong answer would you include on this? Well, I'm a fan of x equals zero. X equals zero is your classic, because x equals zero is this point. Well, I'll tell you what, it'd help if I put it in a color that wasn't, uh, wasn't black. X equals zero is that point there. And it's very tempting to draw quadratic graphs with lines of symmetry on the y-axis. But that's not the case. The line of symmetry is the average between the crossing points. As I say, you can do all this via completing the square, but that's for another day. I think that's more than enough to take in now. So if you wanna try the rest of this quiz out, I'd strongly advise it, because quadratic graphs are coming up. Also, hop onto Mr. Barton Maths, and you'll see uh, videos, worksheets, all that kind of stuff. And I shall return with a fresh question of the week next week. Take care, bye for now.